Good morning. How is it? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. This is this is weird and uncomfortable, but we're going to get there. Um, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the worship of God this morning. Um, we'd like to welcome Laura Young to the pulpit today. Thank you for being here with us, and we welcome back Maria behind the piano. Thank you. Um, we have some visitors and some guests this morning, although most of you are just friends that we haven't met yet. Um, so please do join us for coffee and fellowship following the worship service today so we can all get to know one another. Um, now would be a great time to check and make sure that you turned off your cell phone. Do we have any announcements this morning? Please. Well, uh, I was asked by Marie Wah to remind people that she needs some stuff for the bake sale for the Far Fair, which is this Saturday, this coming Saturday. Anybody who would love to bake or there hasn't been assigned a spot to help, we have, um, let me know. Someone will do it. Got it. And will there be folks here on Friday night setting up? There will. Okay, so if somebody wanted to drop something on Friday night, yeah, they could pop in. Seeing none, let us take a moment to quiet ourselves. There was something else I wanted to remind you, and I forgot all about it. It's right in front of me. This morning we are in the light blue hymnal. Suzanne usually does a fantastic job making sure there's one by everybody. So make sure you have one um, and you're not in the other hymnal this morning usually am. Please stand as you feel called and join with me in the call to worship which is printed in your bulletin. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, and the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and right and righteous altogether. Our first hymn is number 170, Give Thanks.
friends, today we acknowledge that everything has been created by God in accordance with God's plan. Forgive us for not fitting into the grand scheme of things. Let us pray. <coughs> Father, help us to see and truly realize that everything we see has been made by you. Let us focus on you and not the circumstances around us. We don't even realize when we get off the right path. Forgive us, teach us, and lead us to where you would have us go. Amen. And now let us open our hearts in silence to God. Amen. The glorious truth is that we've already been forgiven for the sins that we've committed. That God loves us and he is a God of second chances. And we constantly are given the opportunity to straighten up and fly right. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. So it's good that you rest once in a while so you don't get too tired. 
Your hand, yeah. Your hand's getting out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, you, you, your skin apples for long enough, your hand starts start cramping up. That's true too. So, so let's talk a little bit about helpers, right? So I saw a lot of helpers today, right? So it was really nice that everybody got together and helped, right? All things come together for good for those who love the Lord. I heard that somewhere. So when we all put our, our hands together, it makes the job easier, and that's part of what being a church community is about. So part of it for us is offering to help, and the other part, the part that sometimes can be hard for us, is accepting help. Who has a hard time accepting help? Yeah, I can do it myself. Thank you for offering, but it's fine. Really, I can manage. Sometimes we simply can't manage, right? But we don't want to accept that, and we don't want to admit that. So we say, no, I don't need any help, we're good, we have it under control, right? But we also know that part of being a community together is that we all put our hands together and we work together. And when we all work together to help one another, it makes everybody's life a little bit easier. Even if we think maybe they can't help so much. Some of us, especially if we have little hands, right? Sometimes people with little hands would say, you know what, that's okay, we'll get you when you're a little older. But we learn about how to help when our hands are little and we're smaller, right? So I'll bet you had a lot of, you, you helped a lot on Friday, even though you had little hands, right? And maybe sometime you'll, maybe you and I sometime can come and do the pies. Maybe next time. We'll see, right? Oh, did you come too? Awesome. I, I didn't see when your hand came up, so that's wonderful. I bet you had fun too. Yes. I love the crown. Everybody, you know, we all get crowned. So, yeah, we'll talk. So, another time we'll talk about being a child of God and being a princess, but not this morning. We're talking about helping. So, we have to be gracious when people offer to help us. I know when Mitch was sick and when I was sick, people were there anything we can do? No, no, it's fine, it's fine. You know what? I really could have used somebody to go pick up a bag of groceries. But I didn't want to admit that. So, if somebody offers to help, I know I'm really bad when we have company for dinner, everybody wants to help. I learned, you know what? But can you get the ice out of the ice machine and fill the glass and do the favor? It's one less thing I have to do, and it keeps them out of my hair. <laughs> so, right, it just gives them something to do. Like, they feel better because they're helping, and I feel better because they're not bugging me. It works all the way around. So, when somebody offers to help us, we need to remember to be gracious and thankful and say, yes, please, that would be great. Because that's our way of extending God's love to one another, and it's a really important thing to do together. You got that? Okay, it's not too complicated. I didn't use too many big words this morning. But everybody needs to make sure it's a good thing. So, do you want to have a prayer together? We'll hold hands. My, my sixth grade teacher wrote in my yearbook, you have a helping hand, it's at the end of your arm. It took me a while to process that. You have, you have helping hands. Whenever you need helping hands, you have helping hands at the end of your arms. They're right here and right here. Got it? Yeah. All right, well, let's pray together. You guys can pray with us, okay? Dear God, thank you for loving us so much that you give us helping hands that we can reach out to give help and to receive help. To receive help. Remind us, Remind us that we can use our hands, use our hands to, pray to, you, to pray to you, even if that's the only help we can give. We love you too. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you for coming up.
And we praise you and we thank you always for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, uh, our first reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. If you will only obey the Lord, If you will only obey the Lord your God by diligently observing all his commandments that I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will send you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be in the fruit of your womb, the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of your livestock, both the increase of your cattle and the issue of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall, be, shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command a blessing upon you in your barns and in all that you undertake and will bless you in the land that the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people as he has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. All the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. The Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the fruit of your womb fruit of your livestock and in the fruit of your ground in the land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give to you. The Lord will open for you his rich storehouse, the heavens, to give the rain of your land in its season and to bless all your undertakings. You will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. <coughs> the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be only at the top and not at the bottom if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I am commanding you today, by diligently observing them. And if you do not turn aside from any of these words, and I am command, as I am commanding you today, either to the right or to the left, following other gods to serve them. And our New Testament reading is from Matthew chapter 5. 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil evil against you falsely on your account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. I hope you noticed that uh, that was a lot of blessings, both the Old Testament and the New talking about God's blessings. <clears throat> oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Oh, if only you understood. Do you know that all you have is because God has given it to you? Unless you don't believe in God's word. Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variance or shadow, shadow of turning. Thanksgiving is a key to humility. We are taught, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. <clears throat> humble
Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in proper time. How many of us need to be lifted up? Humility is knowing that you have nothing and you are nothing without God. Humble yourself. Put pride aside. Training our hearts to give thanks does many good things. It gives credit where credit is due. To God be all the glory. Amen. Amen. It keeps us from bitterness, from arrogance, and from discouragement. Humility protects us from letting our lives be defined by what we don't have. It keeps us humble and reminds us of our need for God. Oh, if only you understood. Some people have worked hard and attribute all their success and acquired things to their own cleverness and the relentless effort they give to have and to gain. But where did your strength come from? Where did your abilities come from? Does not the word tell us that God knit you together in your mother's womb? That you are a created being, that he has given you every good gift? Is it so difficult to accept that you are not your own? Oh, oh if only you understood. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he has given Jesus Christ his Son. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him in psalms. Give thanks always for everything to God, the Father, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to God and bless his name. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, not cease giving thanks. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. These verses and so many others, why so much about giving thanks? Well, firstly, it's necessary to give thanks to even be able to position yourself in God's presence when you pray. Does God really need our thanks? No. But we need to be humble and completely aware of our need for God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. So to enter his into his presence, we must come with a heart of thanks. Why? To remind us who God is, that he is good, and that his love endures forever, that he hears our prayers and answers them, that he cares for us and he loves us and desires to have fellowship with us. It's not my words. Those are the words of the Lord. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I'm sure you all recognize that scripture, John 3.16. Do you believe that God loves you beyond measure? And that sending Jesus is the dying and living proof? Oh, if only you understood. Thanksgiving is the key to humility, knowing God is all and you are nothing without him. You have nothing if it were not for him. It is by his love and grace that you even have life and so much more, salvation in Christ. Stuff is just stuff. Assets, money, jobs, cars, homes, clothes, food. Pride tells you that you have acquired it all yourself. God tells us that he shall supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. So which is it? Did it come from you or did it come from God? When we acknowledge God as the giver of all things, we sacrifice our pride and admit that what we have is a direct result of his blessing us and that we would not have all that we have without him. Refusal to give thanks is actually an act of pride. And the Bible tells us that pride goes before destruction and a Holy Spirit before a fall. So give thanks, if only you understood. You see, it's conditional. It's a command like so many others. God tells us what is good for us to do so that his goodness can be open to us. He wants to bless us. That he has given us free will to make the choice. 
Why? Because he wants us to want him. Not a forced relationship that is against our will or desire. He wants us to desire him in our lives as he desires us to be in his. Maybe it's hard for you to believe that or to understand that God actually desires to have fellowship with you. But his word is true and it says so. We should be women and men after his own heart because we understand who he is, what he has given us, and what he has done. Give thanks. In English grammar, we learned that this is a complete sentence. Did we have any English teachers here? Oh, I thought so. <laughs> yes. Give thanks. It's a complete sentence, right? Subject, verb, object of the verb. But what's the subject here? It's not give. You. That's the verb. You. There you go. It's not thanks. That's the object. The subject is you. And they call that you understood. Therefore, the title of the sermon, you understood. Uh -huh. Right? You give thanks. Like so many of God's commands for us, the you is understood. God speaking to you personally. And that needs to be understood. All that we need to have, <clears throat> that relationship with God, which will unfold life and life more abundantly for us, has been given to us through Jesus. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the Redeemer of heaven and earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. To grow closer to God, we need to understand that we must build our lives around him. And that begins with humility and giving thanks. The Bible tells us to give thanks in all things. It doesn't say for all things. But when we develop that grateful heart, we look up and thank God because he is worthy of all praise. We don't look side to side at our circumstances to decide whether we are content with them. And then and only then thank God if we are happy with things that are going on. Paul said he had learned the key of being content no matter what. No matter what the circumstances were, he realized that he could do all things in Christ who strengthens him. Can you? Oh, if only you understood. Give thanks. You give thanks. No matter what's going on in your life, God remains steadfast. He is good. He is unfailing. His mercies are new every morning. He is righteous and just. He has given us salvation through Christ. He has redeemed us. He is our creator, our healer, our shelter, and our refuge. These things are exciting to know. So much more. These things never change. God hears our prayers. God has given us an inheritance with the saints of the kingdom of heaven. God is true to his word. He is with us always. We always, only, have to lift up our heads to see. So why do you give thanks? Maybe because you understood. Rejoice in the Lord always. Express gratitude. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Practice thanksgiving. It is God's will concerning us. We can never see the full picture. We can't look at every situation and understand why it's happening that way. Why are some sick? And others healthy why do some suffer so much while others seem to have everything there seems to be no rhyme and reason to life we can only read Ecclesiastes and realize that our mortal lives are temporary and all is vanity pride doesn't want us to think that but this is just a breath in the wind living here being here because what we have to look forward to is eternal. All that truly matters while we're here is whether we trust God and have a relationship with him through accepting Jesus in our heart. We must then know that no matter how things look, God's word is true. He says that he is at work in all things and is working them out for our good and for his glory. No matter what is happening, we can always thank God for his presence for redeeming us, for sustaining us, 
for loving us, and for the day we will all rejoice together in eternal heaven. Yet even so, you can only rejoice if you only understood. Giving thanks is full of very present and tangible blessings. As we read in our scriptures lessons this morning, following God's commands, of which giving thanks is one, you give thanks. God will set you on high. Blessings will come to you and overtake you. You, your family, your land, your sustenance will all be blessed. You shall overcome any enemies, and that includes Satan and his minions. The Lord will establish you with prosperity and with favor. He will supply all your needs. You will be the head and not the tail. You will be above and not beneath. When you live with an attitude of gratitude, the Holy Spirit is unhindered to work within your heart. You exhibit the fruit of the Spirit then, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This opens you to so much more of God's blessings. As we read in Matthew 5, the Beatitudes, because you become meek, gentle, humble, pure in heart, a peacemaker, one who stands for Jesus truly and faithfully, and so on. You receive mercy, satisfaction, the kingdom of heaven is your inheritance, and you shall see God. Through many, though many may come against you, God is for you. So who can be against? All the blessings become yours because you give thanks. And here's the crux if you understood. Being a person focused on gratitude and thanksgiving pleases God. It changes your character. You will become a positive person that others want to be around. You will not focus on problems, worries, disasters, drama, and be full of complaints. Rather, you will naturally focus on Jesus and allow him to be your refuge and your strength. Tough situations won't overwhelm you. They will build you up. They will give you character. They will give you the ability to manage things. They will get you to be a solution-oriented person. You will develop perseverance, ability to cope, and stay calm in calamity. I was telling Mary, this stuff made me think of her as I was writing it. <laughs> Amen? People that stay calm in calamity. People that thank God no matter what. You will experience that peace that passes all understanding. And who isn't seeking to have peace in their heart and soul, to have peace in their life? The peace of God that passes all understanding begins with giving thanks. You will naturally be drawn to follow God's most important commands. If only you understood. You love the Lord, your God, more than anything else. You do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. You keep yourself unstained by the world. You take care of orphans and widows. You remember the prisoners and those who are ill-treated. You be an effectual doer of the word. You love your neighbor. You give thanks. And you will see that thanksgiving becomes your superpower. It enables you to see past your experiences and instead embrace how God is moving in your life and in the lives of others. Not only are thankful people able to draw strength from gratitude, but they are also able to empower others with godly perspective as well. So give thanks. Be thankful. If only you understood. Amen. Amen. I hope that helps you think of Thanksgiving, <laughs> the upcoming holiday, in a more God focused, spiritual way than just turkey and stuffing. Amen. 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 The, um, let's see, how do you end your.
Affirmation of Faith, the Apostles' Creed. I know it's probably in here, but page what? 14. Page 14. Okay. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Okay, if there be none, let's bow our heads in prayer. Hallelujah. First and foremost, Lord, to come into your presence, we give you thanks. Hallelujah. You are a God who loves us, who hears our prayers, who promises not only to listen, but to work out the answers. Hallelujah. Maybe not always is the way we see them. Lord God, or we think they ought to be worked out, but you know better than we do. Your ways are not our ways, your thoughts are not our thoughts, and we just succumb to you, Lord God, the Almighty, who knows all that we don't, and who works out all these things on our behalf, Lord God, for our good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just um, are thankful. We are thankful that you have poured out your healing upon Beth, that her test went well, that there were no disastrous results, hallelujah, but that she will be well and will be healed, hallelujah. Nothing, no bad news. Not that we focus on bad news, Lord God, but we never like to hear it. But even so, Lord God, you are God and we know that you have the power to heal all. And we thank you for pouring out that power on Beth. We thank you also for pouring out that power on her sister, on for the problem she's having with her skin, Lord God, that you make a way that uh, her treatment would be funded. Hallelujah. We praise you, God, for that. And we just know, Heavenly Father, that it will have a positive outcome and her sister will be well. We praise you for the fact that we can all just be here to worship together under one roof, Lord God. Hallelujah. And that there is a loving family here, a church body, Lord God, your children, together just appreciating you and appreciating being able to worship together with you. We lift up Skyler, Lord God, for his issues with drug addiction, Lord God, and we know, Heavenly Father, that you are able to stop addiction and turn it around, Lord God, and we just pray that you do whatever it takes, that this young man would have life and have life more abundantly. Not need the drugs anymore, Lord God, but seek you and that you would fill that hole in his heart, Lord God. Hallelujah. Make him well and, Lord, provide for his needs. We thank you, Lord God, for Hank Smith and for his life, Lord God. And we trust and pray, Heavenly Father, that you are with him and that though his diagnosis is cancer, Lord God, that you are able to heal him. We also know that death is a form of healing, Lord God, so we don't fear death, Lord God, but we pray that you give him many more years of good life. And we pray for his soul, Lord God, for the day that he will be in eternity with you and we will all rejoice with him. Hallelujah. We thank you for his hand upon him and for your peace speaking to his heart. We thank you for Mary Bickle and for all that you did for this uh, 100 pies uh, escapade. We thank you for all the helping hands that, that came and showed up to assist in any way they could. We thank you for the laughs, the chatter, the joy. Hallelujah, the smell of apples and cinnamon, Lord God. We just thank you for the beautiful abundance that you have provided for us. We thank you for these pies. We thank you for the blessings they will be to many families. Hallelujah. And we give thanks for all the helping hands and we just ask Heavenly Father that you bless them all abundantly as they have blessed their church and one another. Hallelujah. We thank you for the kids that, that came, Lord God. 
Oh, we thank you for them. We thank you for the children, Lord God, the future of our world, Lord God. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that as a church, everyone here is able to influence and show them what it means to live the love of Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, we remember the veterans today, Lord God, especially those who have already passed, that are part of this church family, Carl and Don. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for their service and their sacrifice, and we thank you for all those veterans who have passed and who are now serving, Lord God. Ones we don't even know of or know about, Heavenly Father, the troops have been sent to areas of, that don't really get publicized, Heavenly Father. Oh, Russia and Ukraine, Lord God, Israel. Oh, my Lord. Lord, I just pray that you keep our soldiers safe. Oh, be with them, Heavenly Father. Speak peace to their hearts, Lord God. Let them feel all the love and appreciation for them as they serve, Lord God. Hallelujah. Be with them, Jesus. Oh, mostly, Heavenly Father, bring about peace on this planet so that wars and fight won't even be necessary. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Um, that includes prayers for, for Ukraine and especially the situation that's been going on there for so long. We keep sending more weapons to the place, but Lord Jesus, their needs are so great. There are so many that are without food, without water, without heat. Oh my Lord, just people whose homes have been blasted. Um, I don't even I don't even know what to think about all that, Lord God. But I know that as this person reaches to you, Heavenly Father, that you are there for them, that you weep with those who weep, that you mourn with those who mourn, and that you will lift up everyone who reaches out for you, Heavenly Father. We pray for people like Walker, Lord God, who can't get the medical treatments that they need, that are ill because of the war zone that they're in, Lord God. And we just pray, Lord God, that you would keep Walker and you would provide for him, Lord God. Hallelujah. We pray for Maria's heart and for her love for her family, Lord God. Hallelujah, that she would be comforted by you in that supernatural way, as we all are comforted. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, and we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give yes, us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. How are we doing on time? We're doing. We're doing. Oh, Maria, it has to be at, 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 at Scotch Town at 11, so. Um, <laughs> let us do, oh, what's next? The offering? Offering.
for that. Because we live this place, leave this place, but never the presence of God. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now, and forevermore. Please help us keep in mind that God has created us as